So we've been working together with the University of Sao Paulo since 2016 when we first went out on the sister ship of the Discovery, the James Cook, to Tropic Seamount in the Northeast Atlantic. So we know each other quite well. Uh, this trip has been really good because we had a lot of students, graduate students working together and they've made a really tight team working 24 hours a day in different, different groups, planning the operations, collecting the samples, processing everything. Yeah, so it's been a very uh, good experience of bonding between the different groups. This project has as a focus fundamental e estudar como se formam as crustas, tanto do ponto de vista biológico, tanto do ponto de vista geológico, tanto do ponto de vista, vamos falar, paleocinográfico, paleoclimático, porque a gente está vendo que também tem uma relevância com o clima. Todos esses fatores muito complexos, multidisciplinares, foram estudados no longo desse projeto. Foi uma parceria onde os ingleses encaixaram muito bem porque eles tinham a capacidade com alguma técnica de algum equipamento que a gente não tinha. E do outro lado, a gente tem conhecimento de algumas condições biológicas, geológicas, que eles não têm. A situação de Rio Grande é muito ampla. A gente, na verdade, está estudando uma parte, uma porção muito pequena de toda a região. Então, a gente tentou de encontrar as, as áreas que tivessem algumas morfologias, tanto do ponto de vista geológico, tanto do ponto de vista de circulação marinha, distintivas e diferentes. So we started out with this hypothesis of uh, ferromanganese crusts and these, these mineral deposits. The hypothesis we explored, which is quite interesting, but we found so much more. We found this drowned island, we found this, uh, these lava fields, these fossil forests, we found these red beds, we found these old beaches and this old shoreline, which probably drowned uh, 40 million years ago. Totally unexpected here, uh, in such water depths as well. We, we were looking at 600 to 1,400 meters, still finding evidence that once this was dry land, this was totally unexpected. Foi um, um desafio contínuo o fato que a gente tive que se adaptar às várias condições que a gente encontrava. Então, a gente ficou, começou a estudar as crustas, mas no final a gente acabou estudando variações do nível do mar, acabou estudando os materiais vulcânicos, paleossolos, materiais carbonáticos. Então, várias condições que a gente não estava esperando. Então, foi, foram grandes surpresas. Esse estudo dessas regiões levou a gente a descobrir muitas coisas que a gente nem ia imaginar de descobrir. When you go to sea, the first thing you realize is how huge the whole ocean is. Thousands of square miles of just blue waves, you know. When you go down to the seabed, you have to try and make some sense of this, and this requires a lot of technology. So we, nowadays we have the advantage of what we call sonar, multi-beam systems which can map the seabed in quite good detail, maybe the size of a football field we could see quite easily. Once we made these maps, then we use our robotic underwater vehicles, and these are zooming in closer and closer to the seabed. So we were able to make our maps with the ship systems, then we were able to narrow down some interesting areas, use the autonomous underwater vehicle, it swims on its own, goes on its own, no wires or anything, it just, we send it off, 24 hours later, it comes back to the ship, we pick it up and then we read all the data. We made beautiful maps from this, really high detailed maps that you could see uh, you know, a, a, a table tennis table on. Then we used an ROV, a remotely operated vehicle, which is attached to the ship. It has cameras and lights and has an arm and we can pick up samples and video the seabed, zooming in all the time. Without this technology, we would discover none of these things. 